Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're still with us here on the Sea Morning Show. As we approach a halfway point of our program, it's time for our first morning discussion. And it's something that all of us have probably experienced at one point or another with uh, a situation where we praise ourselves when we succeed. But sometimes we may blame others or even external circumstances when we fail. Now, there's actually a term for this. It's called self-serving bias in psychology. Alan, you, you recognize when I described the situation, but we weren't familiar with the term, Yes, right? yes. I feel it very relevant, especially in right. the financial market when we experience a profit, when our portfolio is green, yes. for example. We tend to, oh, I'm so good at picking I'm the stocks. I'm great at investing, yeah. Yeah, I'm great at investing, but, but when it turned into negative or minus, it doesn't Would perform. You blame it I will blame it on the market, blame okay. it on the Mr. Market because <laughs> of the uncertainty, geopolitical tensions, yeah, right. those kind of things, external factors, but it's not me. Okay, so that's a very good example. I think uh, a lot of times we can equate that in many situations, sports, workplace, school even. So to find out how this affects us and others in our daily lives, this morning we're going to chat with personal growth clinical psychologist Stephanie Valencia. Good morning. Welcome back to the morning. program. Great to have morning, you here. Good morning, Sam. Right. So let's uh, start off by you describing. We've described it in kind of like short, but tell us exactly what self-serving bias is and how this forms in in each of us. Self-serving bias is actually a cognitive bias. So there are lots of cognitive biases, but one of it is self-serving bias. Okay. So the key factors are we attribute our uh, success to our internal factors, such as our intelligence or our efforts. Okay. And the second factor is we attribute failures or mistakes to others or external circumstances. Okay. So uh, let's take the example of a uh, project in, in, uh, in your work, let's say. When I succeed, it's because I'm good at it. It's because I'm smart. It's because uh, I have the intelligence capacity to do it. But when I fail, it's because maybe my boss doesn't like me or maybe my teammate is not as good as me. So it's okay. always like that. And why does this happen? Well, there are lots of factors, but uh, we try to maintain our self-esteem by doing that. Okay. Of course, when we fail, we don't want to feel bad about ourselves. So that's why we try to make excuses by... Because of self-love. <laughs> It's not a self-love, it's no. a self more of defense mechanism. Oh. But isn't, isn't, it, isn't it good to protect our self-esteem in a certain way? Yeah, of course it's good. Yeah. I, I don't say that it is necessarily bad, right. but what if we do that all the time and it becomes okay. an extreme, yes. so it becomes bad. Okay. Yeah. What are, yeah, yeah, and then what are the consequences? Yeah, it can strain our relationship with others. Okay. Let's say... In the workplace, yeah. Yeah, that we don't want to take feedback. We always think that others are at fault. So, of course, naturally, people will, they don't like us because they think, why are you so, like, so thinking highly about yourself? And it can lead to narcissistic traits. That's true. Yeah, narcissistic is a trait where, where someone thinks highly of themselves, they have grandiose self-esteem, and they always put others into fault. So, it can lead to NPD. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a, a very interesting thing because I think many examples that we discussed before coming on air, it made me think of a lot of things. I love sports. I can see that this happens in sports all yeah. the time. I can even remember situations where I, I do this as well, uh, to a certain extent. Um, but again, like you said, it's only bad when it becomes an extreme thing that you do all the time. Yes. So what's the balance here exactly? Well, there's a certain uh, uh, benefit in protecting our self-esteem because it maintains our confidence when we continue. If we do fail at something, that we will continue to try it again. Mm -hmm. So where do we find the right balance in regards to protecting our self-esteem but not have it as a self-serving bias? Yeah, so instead of just attributing to internal or external factors, so it's very black or white, yes. so we have to think comprehensively and look at all the factors that can contribute to our success or our failures. Okay. For example, uh, take sport yes when we uh, succeed it's not just because I'm good at it it's not just my technical skill but I have my coach for it I have my teammates so okay. we have a good uh, teamwork instead of just me and I but okay. when we fail it's also not just because of others but maybe I also contribute to that maybe I have something that I can improve so we can uh, success as a team okay so whether or not you basically yes. succeed or fail you have to analyze both sides yes. of it Yes, of try to be objective. How can we practice like mindfulness mm -hmm. as in so we can have like more objective views or balanced views, comprehensive views to analyze our success or failure? Mm -hmm. 
first we have to be self-aware yes. because if we are not aware then how can we improve True. and then uh, learn to take feedback from others so ask for feedback and listen to them maybe they're not always right of course they can also be biased but it's worth considering so we can see what people see in ourselves instead of just what I see in myself and what I see in others and then we also have to uh, have to build a growth mindset Mm -hmm. We see failures or mistakes as an opportunity to grow instead of That's a threat. Yeah, so we can have a more balanced view about ourselves and others. Well, does uh, journaling or other uh, method can help? In well, it can. That? It can. It, it depends on the person. Yes. Some people write, uh, like to write. Some people like maybe to record their accomplishment or their um, feedback to themselves. Yeah, it can, it can uh, manifest in lots of methods. Okay. okay. In regards to um, having methods on how to uh, maintain our behavior and our self-esteem, like you said, it all goes back to first you have to be self-aware. Okay. It seems to me that uh, somebody who ha has a self-serving bias will likely not, not think about how I can be se more self-aware. What, what is a good way for us to uh, become more self-aware of mm -hmm. ourselves? Our I think we naturally know when we feel defensive. Okay. Like when we feel uncomfortable, that's a sign that something is happening. Okay. Whatever it is. So start there. When you feel uncomfortable, instead of uh, being defensive or deny, start to reflect in word. What I, I what do I actually feel? What makes me feel this way? Is there something that I can improve or is there something that I can explore? So that's the start of having the self-awareness. Okay. So I think I've seen the manifest of this self-serving bias a lot on the social media. For example, people always see themselves as victim when mm. people give them like negative uh, feedback or yeah. comments yeah. negatively. I don't say that negative comments uh, is good. Yeah. But sometimes we always think like other people are wrong. We become defensive. They're just, yeah. you know, yeah. be yeah. jealous. Mm of me, something like that. Do you think that it is also like a reflection of self-serving bias? Yes, of course. Oh. So when people attack us, again, the self-serving bias is a way to protect our self-esteem. Yes. So to some extent, it's okay to have that. But then if you keep getting negative comments, maybe it's worth to reconsider. Like, is, that, is this really something uh, that is my fault? Or is this just people being biased to me? You can ask our, your uh, closest person for feedback because, again, strangers don't know us best. Yes. Okay. So there's a, a difference in culture, whereas we in Asia we have this like Asian collectivism, and in in the Western world it's more individualistic. Yeah. Let's say. Can these kind of like differences in cultural factors uh, play a role in self-serving bias? Can it affect one more than the other? Yes. Interestingly, okay. self-serving bias still exists both in collectivistic culture or individualistic cultures but it manifests differently. How so? Yeah, in individualistic culture, where uh, achievement, personal achievement is more emphasized. Yes. Self-serving bias can come in handy. Like when I uh, succeed, success, uh, it's because of me, but when I fail, yeah, it's because of others, it's because of external circumstances. Okay. But in collectivistic cultures, we, we see the self as us. Yes. For example, right. If uh, my teammate is, me and my teammate is having a failure, it's not because of us, but it's because of others. So it's not I versus you, but us versus them, others. Them, others. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Because we tend to maintain, maintain that collectivistic culture. Oh, okay. Self-serving bias might help when you write an essay to get <laughs> acceptance letters <laughs> to your university. Yes. Sure. It can help us in lots of things to protect our uh, image and our... Okay. And I think, I, think, I think the key goes back to, again, if we are self-aware of it, then we know when to use it or when it can come into yeah. play to be more helpful. For so, us. when do we need to think seriously about this? For example, that we need not only to ask our closest uh, friends, but also consult a professional. Mm -hmm. When it has already restrained your relationship, because the most obvious... Uh, like sign is when you have restrained relationship with your co-workers, with your friends, with your family. Because when you're not self-aware, you don't know that something is not right. Yes. But when other people give feedback to us, we know that something is not right. Okay. Yeah. So then we, let's say, let's take it for example, 
it's it's affecting somebody close to us. It's not happening to us directly. Mm -hmm. We see the signs that yeah. hey, you're always always constantly being defensive mm -hmm. or you're constantly blaming blaming others. It's sometimes sensitive or tricky to bring yeah. this up because when you bring it up, then they're going to get defensive, yeah, of right? Course. So what what do you suggest <laughs> would be the best? Yeah, it's always like yeah, no win, lose, yeah. lose lose situation. <laughs> so what would be the best approach for them to uh, to to kind of use a method that is easier for them to kind of open the door so that they're able to accept the criticism. We can start by opening up ourselves. Okay. Say, I, uh, I noticed that I sometimes do this. What do you think of ah, me? Ah, nice And trick. then <laughs> it, will, it will help them to be more open and okay. then we can give feedback. Of course not you make mistake, you fail. Right. That. What do you think? So okay. reframe it in a question way. That's actually a very good question. Wow, yeah. that's very handy, that tips. Because I have a friend like that. Look, yeah. It seems like everybody else is wrong. Like, yeah. he but has then if you say so, then you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when I say that to right. him, I might be wrong right. in his eyes, right? Okay. So I guess uh, when you bring up yourself as an example, it can be yeah. a reflection for them mm -hmm. and then maybe kind of turn a switch yeah. in their head. I feel this way. Have you ever felt this way as uh, well? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Take note on that one. <laughs> yes. That's going to come in handy. Thank you so much. And then we have this uh, term also, actor observer bias, how okay. it's different from the self-serving bias. Well, first of all, what is that? Because I'm not familiar with actor, yeah, actor observer mm. bias. Actor observer bias is similar to this one, but it's more of, let's say, when I fail, it's because the external circumstances. But when others fail, it's because of their internal. I say okay. like this. We're judging uh, yeah. others. Yeah. When I'm late, it's because of the heavy traffic. Okay. But when you are late, it's because you are not good at time management. You are being oh. responsible. Wow, wow. Yeah. It happens a lot. It happens <laughs> yeah. a lot. Like you, you, what is it? You are very understanding to yourself, yeah. but you're not understanding yeah. to others. Okay, why, why, does, why does this happen? Because self-serving bias serves to protect our self-esteem. But mm -hmm. what, why, why, why do people sometimes have actor observer bias? It's similar, it's actually similar. Because we know ourselves better, like you okay. said. So when I do mistake, because I have reasons, I have excuses. Right. But when others do it, it's because they are not good as a person. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's more like judgy. Yeah. Judgy. <laughs> you're becoming judgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> real quick, is there is there any possibilities of uh, people becoming? What are the possibilities of people overcoming their self-serving bias and finding the proper balance? Because again, we're talking about this to an extreme. Because I mentioned the opposite as well. For example, I don't know what the term for it is psychologically, mm -hmm. but. There are people out there that constantly blame. Them. It's yeah. the opposite of self-serving yeah. bias. W yeah. What is that called? And and first of all, how how does that? Uh, how can somebody become aware of that and overcome it? Because for example, I'll give you an example. Whatever happens, I'm always the one at fault, mm. as opposed to blaming external yeah. factors. You're always blaming yourself. What yeah. is self-blaming. It's self-blame. Yeah, okay. it's basically self-blaming. And when you do that to uh, an extreme, it can lead to depression. Of course, because you are always at fault. You are n not good enough you are not worthy and then you feel depressed because of it. Of course, we don't want to people to go that way. Okay. So again, it's about the balance and the moderation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So balance and moderation, that's the key and takeaways from this discussion. And self-awareness is yes, very important. Yes, self-awareness. Yeah. Listen to yourself and also listen to others, not just listen to yourself. Has there been uh, ever situations where somebody has had to seek help from, uh, for example, psychologists in regards mm -hmm. to this? I think more often the the self-blaming one who come. Oh, I see. Because they are more aware of it. They are extremely sensitive about uh, viewing themselves. Right, and yes. it's affecting them more yes. personally as opposed to everybody else. Yes, the self-surfing bias, usually the others come. That's true. Yes. <laughs> They're like complaining yes. about other people. Yes, that's right. Sense. So I think self-surfing bias can also uh, severe or, I mean, makes your relationship in a marriage worse yes, right of i course. think it yeah. happens in marriage as well yeah. like you're, you're blaming it's your partner spouse. yeah your really? spouse mm -hmm. okay really you can get that yeah. bad yeah, yeah when yeah. when let's say when the parenting is not going well it's because of my spouse not doing her oh, work or my yeah. spouse not doing his work okay yeah yeah Ooh, that's yes. a common that's a common example <laughs> that, that one i can yeah i've heard of a lot when you see like your children misbehave and then you blame the mother yeah your wife like why yeah yeah. You know, I mean, it's different when you have a good cop, bad cop role. We have yes. that in our household, and that's fine because both of us have agreed upon yes. it. But I think it happens when, uh, yeah, oh, I'm a great dad. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing can be a self-serving bias. All right. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, for oh, clearing uh, this up because it is something that we, again, we mentioned earlier at the discussion that 
we might encounter this day to day. In fact, many of you might already go be going through it, but it's important for you all to be self-aware in order to make your relationships around you better, whether it be at the workplace, at home, in sports, or anything else you might encounter. All right. Thanks yes. again for the conversation. Always glad Thank to have you, you Thank on. Thank you, Steph. Happy to be Appreciate here. Appreciate this. All right. Yes. Well, we're going to take another short break here on the program, but we have more interesting stories from around the world in our international news segment when we return here on the Sea Morning Show, only on Sea Today. Stay with us.